Hello, I'm uh, Ken Harris and I'm going to do an Australiana scene today. Very nice little scene for you to do. The tools I'm using, a small detail brush, a, uh, a small knife, a small fan brush and uh, the brush I'm doing the main painting with is about one and a half centimetres wide. I'm going to start off with um, a little bit of uh, blue, ultramarine, I'm sorry, Prussian blue uh, for the sky and I'm going to make it fairly dark. <clears throat> And, uh, well, as we come down the sky, we're going to add a little bit of pink. Incidentally, this board has got a bit of um, medium on the face of it. It makes it much easier to brush your paint away. So I'm going to deliberately leave a few little holes in the sky. And we'll just work across there and perhaps a little bit down here. And that'll, that'll just, it looks very rough, but it'll come up like a million dollars when we, when we uh, get the pink into it. I'm going to just put that paint to the side for a moment. And uh, I have a little bit of pink there, a little bit of white and... And, and red, of course, and a tiny bit of orange will give you a sort of a, an apricot. A little more white in that. Now, whenever you wash the brush, be very sure to get the rubbish out of the brush. And I'm going to run this pink in here. And just work it around through the blue where where the blue, you can see where the blue is on a bit thin, you can, you can work the, the pink around between that blue. You're going to get a little bit of cross-contamination, of course, but that doesn't matter. That's half the fun. And uh, all of this sort of thing is covered in the workshops that I have. And uh, look at my website, Ken Harris Art School. Ken Harris Art School, and uh, get the date of the, the next workshop uh, near you, Perth, Sydney, Adelaide, uh, uh, Melbourne, and uh, come along and uh, you'll really have a ball. Now I'm just going to fuse that away gently, gently, gently there. That's about what we need. I'm going to wash the brush again and I'm going to take, again, be very careful to squeeze that turps out. I'm going to take a little bit of Australian red gold and run that in here. I'm not going right to the horizon line with it though, I'm just going to go part way up the board. The same here, get it dark down here, just leave it there and pick up a tiny bit of white and make it a bit lighter in the distance. That gives you a much, much better depth of field in the painting. In other words, we want things to look a long way away in the distance. And the, the road here, I'm going to pick up a bit of pink here and run that into the distant road and bring it down here. And then I'm going to go to a little bit of burnt sienna. Looks very similar to Australian red gold, but the Australian red gold has got yellow in it, you see. And it's got more of a yellowy sort of look, whereas this has got a sort of a reddy sort of look. Now, I'm going to pick up, I have a little bit of purple here on my board. I'm going to use that in here to run this little hill away. And I'm going to pick up a bit of that pink too and run the other side away and get a lighter tonal value. And this other hill here, we need a nice dark colour there, so we can use this darkish colour again here, this purpley colour again here, but it doesn't go right to the top because we have a little bit of uh, rock showing at the top of the hill. But we we'll just run this down here. And it's only, we're not going to see this in the finished painting, 
uh, this will be covered. But put it on thin. Very important, put it on thin. <coughs> now, at the top of the painting here, I'm going to take a little burnt sienna and run in this sort of rocky formation in the in the hill here and we've got a likewise situation in here and we we can pick up a little bit of pink to highlight that way in the distance now the hill itself I'm going to mix up some green to to run some foliage in on the hill and we need a bit of orange and a bit of Payne's grey. But having said that, I'm going to just leave that there for a moment, wipe the worst of the paint out of the brush. And I have some olive green here. Now this is very rare for me to use olive green, as you probably all are very much aware of. Um, those people who watch me on a fairly consistent basis will know that I rarely, re in fact I, oh yes I have used olive green on other paintings but it's very rare that I use it and I want to get this texture within the the hill and we've got some we've got some foliage growing above this as well this rock face and now this is the green that I mixed up and really you can hardly see any difference apart from the fact that it's a little bit darker in tonal value but there's the olive green you brush that away it's very similar to the the green that I mix up myself and we want to bring that green right up to the bottom of that cliff face there, run a little bit of it up through the rock work and down here on the other side just creep around there And that's about what we want. We could also run a little bit more here and there and up the side of it here. And we need something just a little bit more definite here on the end. And a little bit of highlight within it, texture within it. about all we need. Now, we do need to run some little trunks away on some of these trees and of course they're, it's put on in such a random manner that it's impossible to uh, depict one tree from another. So if you just get this texture in like this, then we'll come back and put some highlight on the painting in this area here and we can direct a little bit of highlight over some of these. We can use a little bit of yellow green and we, where there's a little outcrop we could use also a little bit of yellow ochre in places and we can also use a little burnt sienna you can use burnt sienna and orange. Got a little bit of rubbish on the end of the brush there. So there's a whole range of colours you can use there. Yellow ochre probably is as good as any, surprisingly. And at the top here, we can use just the tiniest bit of yellow ochre along there however yeah it's got a tiny bit too much there we just cover him a bit all right that's about that's about all we need now we do need to come along under here and
brush this away, make it look as if it's joined to the ground. That's important. You notice there's a little bit of a little bit of a slope in this horizon line, which has been put in deliberately. It's falling down a bit on the right hand side. And we're going to run in a row of trees much, much darker, so I'll take a bit more orange and a considerable amount of Payne's Grey. If you don't darken it up, then you're not going to see it against these trees that are already here. So we need to get a little bit of really dark green along here. And uh, the, the trees, we could even have it a tiny bit darker. And the trees on the other side here, we just bring them down below the horizon line there so that the little track is disappearing behind it, the little road. Just get a little more here, run it away virtually to nothing and we're all ready to highlight that. I'm going to use a little orange on there to highlight it. You could use a little bit of yellow ochre again and the same on this side here. Just a little bit of highlight on them. And again, we need to come back to the bottom of the trees to uh, get a little bit of shadow. We must get that little bit of shadow underneath them, like so. And the same here. We'll run some trunks up on those in a few minutes, but we're going to go to a break and uh, then we'll come back and, and run the rest of the, the painting. So I'll see you after the break and uh, you'll be hopefully all ready to go. Thank you.